You mentioned Bray Wyatt there. Unfortunately, he uh, he recently passed away, and uh, a devastating loss to not just the world, but but certainly the wrestling community as a whole. And uh, I, I was wondering, can you tell us a little bit about your experiences working with Bray? Sure. Um, when he first got to FCW, I think he was right off the gridiron. He he'd never been in a wrestling ring, and you know he got the opportunity because his lineage, and that's awesome. No problem. He was a sweet charming playful he was very santa claus ish he was very like jolly you know uh you just always had like just the rosy cheeks always smiling and always asking questions and i just kind of felt like i always felt like how jake was he was an open book to me i was going to be an open book to anybody that was crazy enough to want to know i was crazy enough to give answers we're in the same company together trying to make uh, money for ourselves and our company together so he would ask why do you do this and why do you do that and what about this and what about that like he was just always wondering and be, uh, just a curious guy, you know, like, why would you do this? Why would you do that? And uh, he, he came to me one, I'll tell you a silly story. He came to me when they wanted to put him in those trunks and call him Husky Harris. And he said, he goes, uh, he goes, sinner, um, they want me to wear trunks and I'm kind of chubby. I don't know if I could pull that off. What do you think? Because what do you think about a singlet? I said, you're not going to fool anybody with that singlet. Like nobody's going to believe you're Rick Rude under that singlet. <laughs> let's let's try to case babe a little bit better. Like maybe some coveralls or a Hawaiian shirt. You know, the Hawaiian shirt's baggy, so you're not. You know, you know, if you put on a singlet and you get a little tear, it's all going to spill out like a bag of oats. You know, so, <laughs> so if you if you got a you know Hawaiian shirt or coveralls or something, again, my dog my dog agrees. Um, and I go, you know, the Hawaiian shirt's very. Uh, Kate Fear, which is very Charlie Manson. And Charlie Manson, you know, he needs a family. And when I did the circus stuff, the you know, what was really creepy was the animal masks. And he was like, holy shit. And he would write all this down. He would, I just asked questions and we would just laugh and giggle about all sorts of weird shit. And, um, and then he asked me about Tallulah, uh, which was, that, that's the, the, the personal thing. And, 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 and I love him and, and he's gone. And, and so many things that we both were hung up on each other about uh, instantly became unimportant when he left the planet. So I just, I just, it's very important for me to tell the fans, like, if you have a, a disagreement with a friend, a brother, a colleague, or somebody, like, sort it out, because if they're gone, they're gone, and then you get no closure. And I, again, I, I referenced Jake. He was the first guy I called when, when Wyndham left the planet, and I just, I instantly, I, like, I instantly think of Jake when one of the old timers goes because I just want to make sure he's okay. And I asked him about Terry Funk, and he said he was sad but he was okay you know and and i told him the wyndham thing hit me really hard because again i was there when jake made up with ultimate warrior they had you know heat for so long and they made up the day before ultimate warrior powdered yeah. off the planet and i know that did jake so so well i didn't get to do that with with wyndham and it, that it just kind of broke my heart and jake and i had a long talk about it you know, privately. And, and I think just what, what's important, what, the story I'm about to tell is what fans need to know is that um, you got to love your brother, you know, that you know, your bro brothers do you right, do you wrong, but you got to, you got to love each other. And uh, so now I will tell you uh, the story of Abigail. Bray Wyatt <coughs> asked me why I did the move to Lulabelle which is a, a, a different type of DDT. I didn't want to just do the DDT. I wanted to do something to, to, you know, put over Jake, but something with my own spin. So it was it's just a certain <laughs> kind of twisting, twisting double butterfly hook DDT thing. And I called it Tallulah Bell. And Bray Wyatt, Wyndham would ask me, why, why do you call it that? I named, I named that move from my, my legitimate dead sister. Uh, her name is, her name was Sarah. And I didn't want to call the move Goodnight Sweet Sarah because I didn't want to upset my mom. So I yeah. fictionalized her name into Lulabelle, which is Bruce Willis's kid's name. It was just the silliest name I could think of. And that's why I picked it because I, I just didn't want to upset my mom. And he goes, well, why would you name that move after your dead sister? And I said, uh, because when I hit you with Lulabelle, just like her, you're not getting up. And he took a step back and then went, holy shit, sinner, that is so harsh and so stiff. And again, I referenced Jake. I said, you know, Jake pulls so much wonderful creativity from such harsh reality. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to pull something that was credible, something that would put a tear in my eye every time I would think about it. And we said, oh, my God, that's just that's so brutal. And when I got my release, then soon after came Abigail. So yeah. 
I understand his logic and I understand, you know, that sometimes, you know, guys creatively take a step that they maybe shouldn't have taken. And if he had simply just said, Hey, could I do this since you're not a WWE anymore? I'm still alive, but I'm still doing, you know, I still uh, do this to feed my family, but I would have said yes, no problem. But without him asking, it was just a sore spot. It's not right or wrong. He didn't owe me anything. I, I'm, I, I love him and I don't want to say anything ill of him. I was just a little bit upset when uh, I saw Abigail and he knew about it. We talked about it and we had a lot of, a lot of back and forth about it over the years. And, and he's a sweet guy. He was never anything but charming and apologetic about it. And we just, we never got to see eye to eye and we never had closure on that. Like Jake and warrior. And it was, it was, and it is, and it's always going to be a fucking cross for me to bear. Wow, it's a shame. So, I will just simply say to the fans, as respectfully as I can say, that Abigail is both of our sister. I think he earned it. I mean, he did me better than me. I mean, we would always joke and say I, I was the Carl Perkins to his Elvis Presley. Scott Demore uh, will tell you that he taught Rhino everything he knows, but Rhino did Rhino did Scott better than Scott did Scott. And I've got no problem saying that Wyndham Rotundo was amazing and he was a success, and I have zero problems with him using abigail especially i'm sure he's hitting dudes with it up in the stars right now he's running up on terry and everybody else and having a good time and he deserves that and so last week um in my my first match after after we got the news i did abigail and my brain as jake would know is a constant hornet's nest yes and i, I like to do my matches as, uh. as much off the fly as possible as much as my dance partner will permit so I wrestled these two young students at, a, at my Future Stars of Wrestling school in Vegas at a school show, which I really never do. And I just walk up to them and I just said, one of you two can argue about who's taking Abigail tonight. See you fuckers in the ring. <laughs> and that's how that went. And, and I did it. And I tell you, for the moment that I did it, I, my brain felt peace. And it was going to be a one and done thing. And I, I'm trying to get this out of me without you know, looking like I just watched Sleepless in Seattle while cutting onions. But uh, I did. I felt peace. And then it, that was that. And then a fan had posted a, a video of it online, and I was met with a bunch of really sweet, uh, really caring uh, posts. And it's very easy. You know, everybody wants to throw everybody under the bus these days, and everybody wants yeah. to cancel everybody and be so hateful and judgmental cast the first stone but i was really i was received with nothing but man that was really sweet that was respectful they look good on you uh, you should keep doing that you know he was your kid all this kind of stuff and then I, I just got me thinking like i had peace doing it and so i think i might i i'm not gonna do it all the time but i again uh, to reference other brothers uh, when ftr started doing the big rig i thought that was such a cool gesture man I mean, it did. It, it was, I promise you, I, I was cutting onions when I, when I saw that, you know, and I thought that's a good feeling. And if, if we're there to put smiles on faces of the fans, but there's nothing wrong with making each other, you know, uh -huh. uh, that are surrounded in the ropes and turnbuckles happy too. And, Absolutely. and it, yes, sir. And it, it just, it made me think of Wyndham in a really good light. And that's how I want to think of Wyndham.